International spy Kong Shi Hei On is hailed as a skilled S-rank agent, always ready for action. His most recent assignment forces him to return to his home country and take some drastic actions he's never done before, at least not with someone who holds the same sword as he does. Park Ha Jun is a university professor who's having an identity crisis and is rumored to be a promiscuous gay who frequents gay bars, and he happens to be Shi Hei Yeon's unsuspecting new target. The series starts with two armed individuals rushing into the head office of Leonard Industrial in Boston, USA. One of them cursed loudly when they realized that their target was not in his office and was probably already on his way to his getaway helicopter. The other one assured him it shouldn't be a problem since Candy is already waiting for the target at the rooftop. The scene then moves to a man in a black suit, complete with dark-tinted sunglasses, looking like an agent from MIBs in a helicopter, overlooking another helicopter still parked in the helipad. A blondie in an ugly-looking orange suit urges his men to hurry up and get into the helicopter since they no longer have time. And just as the blondie says that his men couldn't even hold their guns properly, the sunglasses guy in a black suit from earlier launched an attack using a gun COD players would easily recognize at a glance while still in his hovering helicopter. In no time, Mr. Sunglasses, who is probably the reliable candy mentioned earlier, incapacitated the mob and landed on the rooftop with a clack. He then proceeds to attack Blondie's remaining guard and at the same time, unarms Blondie of his gun. Candy then slowly approaches him, whom he addresses as CEO Jeffrey Leonard. Candy tells Jeffrey that a lot of people are after his possessions and that if he cooperates with his group, that will, at the very least, ensure his survival. Jeffrey didn't immediately respond and instead asks from what organization Candy is from. Candy denied that he's from the US, Russia, or any third-party force that hires mercenary. Instead, he claims that he's from a private security company called Vulture. Three days later, in one of Vulture's private buildings in the Bahamas, we see Candy and Judogi having a sparring match with a very muscled and toned man. Candy easily subjugated his sparring partner and reprimands him of where he lacks. They are then shortly interrupted by someone telling Candy that the director has called him. On their way to the director, Candy reprimands the messenger for calling him Candy, which apparently is his code name. Candy doesn't like being addressed as such although the other dude doesn't seem to find anything wrong with it. He then recalls how the name was given by the director himself during Candy's first mission in Bosnia. After the director saw a rain of blood splattered down on him, he immediately gave him the name Red Candy. Despite the cool origin of his codename, to Candy, the elder director just had terrible sense in making up names. Later on, Candy, now in his black suit, catches the golf ball with ease as he enters the director's office. He then tells the director to refrain from putting him indoors since the older man is clumsy and obviously has terrible aim unless, of course, he really meant to hit his agent. Anyways, the good-natured older man didn't take kindly the remark that Candy made and threatened to use his head instead of the golf ball. The director then tells his agent, Real Ming Shi Hei to start the business at hand. It seems that Jeffrey Leonard had told them everything they needed to know. Although he insisted that he isn't in possession of the important blueprints to a new weapon that the Blondie planned to sell to terrorists the following week. Apparently, he was supposed to receive it from a university professor he hired, but since they caught him, all contacts are lost, and the man seems to have just disappeared. Vulture did their best to track down the man, but by the looks of it, he had already been reported as missing for two months now. The good news is that they still have an idea of the location of the blueprints, the director took an envelope from inside his suit and expertly throws it on the table in front of Shi Hei Yan. The elder man claims that it's with the only person that the professor trusts, which is his son. Putting two and two together, Shi Hei Yan concluded that his new assignment would have him retrieve those blueprints from the son. Although that may be the case, the envelope didn't just contain the details of his new assignment, but also a green passport. Upon looking at Shi Hei Yan's surprised face, the director asks him if he misses his homeland. Not long after, Shi Hei Yeon finds himself in a bar and is discontent with the director for calling the country he hadn't stepped into for the past 20 years his homeland and whose language he had nearly forgotten. Anyways, Shi Hei Yeon unsuspectingly locks on his target, the university professor's son, who is a professor himself as well despite being young. And it's because of such a background that Shi Hei Yeon finds it unbelievable that such a capable man frequents a gay bar. Moving on. Shi Hei Yeon's target suddenly gets up from his table to leave. The waiter comes to clean up after he sees a ring on top of the table and calls out to the young man, thinking that he has forgotten to bring it with him. But then the man says that he doesn't need it and makes his way across the bar. 
Shi Heian took that as a cue to get up from his seat by the bar to go after the target. But before he could do so, someone calls out to him with the full intention of hooking up. Shi Heian, of course, is too busy for such things, especially if it's with such a shameless fly. When Shi Heian doesn't even grace him with a proper reply, the fly suddenly grabs his arm, pointing out that Shi Heian doesn't even look like he's waiting for someone. The very irritated Shi Heian is just thinking about how he'll beat this annoying fly when someone else did the honors first. Someone behind Shi Heian grabs the fly's wrist and asks him what business he has with his companion. Shi Heian immediately recognizes the voice's owner as he hears from the reference clip he saw of Park Hajun, his target. In the presence of such an intimidating man, the shameless fly backs away and tries to pin the blame on Shi Heian for not saying that he's indeed with someone. Ha Jun was just about to address Shi Heian now that the fly is gone, but in place of his damsel in distress is now an empty space, a swiftness as expected of a famous spy agent. But how such an agent let his target sneak up on him is beyond me. Anyways, while Ha Jun wonders where the man he just rescued disappeared, Shi Heian is in the corner, heart beating so fast, wondering if Ha Jun saw his face. One good thing from such an encounter is that he managed to stick a bug on the target in addition to the tracker already on Ha Jun's car, so that he won't have any problem stalking him now. As Ha Jun finally leaves the bar, Shi Hei Yan notices how someone seems to be also tailing his target. Moving on, Ha Jun decides to use the service stairs after seeing the elevator is still a long way from his floor. The third party stalker is, of course, quick on making his move. Just as he takes out his butterfly knife, Shi Hei Yan catches him, gives him a clean straight in the face, and easily takes the weapon from the stalker as he pins him against the wall. Shi Hei Yan hadn't even managed to ask questions when someone with a taser gun gets into the picture. Fortunately, our star spy is acting like the famous agent that he is and evades the attack just in time. He then pins down the taser guy on the floor and demands the identity of their boss and why they are following Ha Jun. Just in time, Thanks to Shi Hei Yian's sensitive hearing through the bug he had planted on Ha Jun, he realized that his target is about to meet with a backup right about now. Without any more time to waste, Shi Hei Yian dashes away to Ha Jun's location after punching down the taser guy unconscious. This time, it is Shi Hei Yian who manages to surprise Ha Jun as he grabs him and pushes him inside the janitor's utility room. Although they safely managed to evade the backup of the other guys after Ha Jun, now the target really did see Shi Hei Yian's face. The clumsy star agent is panicking at this sudden turn of events. To make matters worse, Ha Jun recognized him as the man he had saved earlier in the bar. On Ha Jun's comment about Shi Hei Yian's ungratefulness and play, the agent suddenly remembers the special note that was written on his target's file about Ha Jun, presumed to be loose and gay. And so, the swiftness and judgment that any spy agent has, Agent Red Candy not only exposes himself to his target, but also hooks up with him. Moving on to the much better plan that should have been plan A in the first place, but unfortunately isn't, Shi Heian goes with the flow and admits to Ha Jun's guess of him just playing hard to get. Shi Heian then asks Ha Jun if he wants to leave the place with him, ultimately taking into motion the operation's plan B, which is dubbed as Honey Trap. No doubt is just as sweet by the looks of it. Not long after, Shi Heian finds himself backed up against the wall and making out with Ha Jun at his place. Although both of them look like they're really into it as they make out, all Shi Heian can think about is how Ha Jun smells strongly of booze in addition to his impatience, both of which reflect just how much of a promiscuous guy he is. Suddenly, Ha Jun stops attacking his cook-up's mouth and tells him to run away if he wants since he's in the mood and might not be able to hold back. The next morning, Ha Jun in his birth suit wakes up in his bed with a hangover, wondering how he had gotten home. He then notices the equally dressed Shi Hei Yian beside him, still peacefully sleeping. Without warning, the surprised Ha Jun suddenly yanks the comforter covering Shi Hei Yian, waking him up. Shi Hei Yian's first reaction is, of course, cursing at whoever exposed his bum bum, only to gather himself after he pulled back the comforter and realized that the culprit is Ha Jun and is now asking for his identity. Ha Jun's interrogation turned into the threat of having to call the police on Shi Hei Yian himself if he turned out to be someone suspicious, which he actually is. Anyways, the anxious and clumsy Shi Hei Yian explains to Ha Jun that the two of them did the nasty the night before. Returning to the night before when, Ha Jun told Shi Hei Yian to run away. Instead of adhering to the warning, Shi Hei Yian just kissed the man. Soon after, 
Shi Heiyan found himself lying on Ha Jun's bed and once again being told to back out. Shi Heiyan reprimands Ha Jun for saying things that potentially ruin the mood, even though his face clearly says he's uncomfortable with whatever they're about to do. Shi Heiyan squat positions with Ha Jun and unclothed to prove his determination. It's not that Shi Heiyan was uncomfortable sleeping with a target, it's just that this will be the first time he'll do so with another man. Moving on, with Shi Heiyan's nip knops now exposed. Ha Jun savors it and comments how, in contrast to how it seemed when covered, Shi Heiyan's body is more well built, not to mention quite sensitive. Without warning, Ha Jun then invades Shi Heiyan's peach, earning a reaction not meant for someone who intended to get a hookup and gay bar. Ha Jun also noticed this and commented on how the peach was unprepared to be invaded, which, of course, isn't and ever was. Despite Shi Heiyan's discomfort, spontaneity is still a must. And so, even though he was cursing Ha Jun in his head, Shi Hei Yian's mouth on both ends had no choice but to let Ha Jun do whatever it was that he wanted while giving a complimenting reaction at the same time. Shi Hei Yian was already in tears as Ha Jun tried to loosen his innocent peach. Fortunately, before being subjected to greater discomfort, Shi Hei Yian noticed that the man under him was now lightly snoring. To say that Shi Hei Yian is upset is the understatement of the century. Well, it is indeed kind of rude, especially since it was Ha Jun himself who claimed to be in the mood. As Ha Jun tries to get dressed, all Shi Hei Yian can think about is how he wishes to beat the crap out of his target. Anyways, although nothing really happened last night, since this is already his chance to get closer to his target, Shi Hei Yian of course stuck to his made-up story and even unclothed them both for consistency's sake. And it is a given that Shi Hei Yian insists on his story even though Ha Jun claims that he can't remember anything happening. However, Shi Hei Yian did not expect Ha Jun to say he'd take responsibility for what had happened and for Shi Hei Yian himself. I also did not expect that, despite having a father who deals with weapons, Ha Jun is clearly brought up as an upright man. Ha Jun begins with a proper introduction. He then tells Shi Hei Yian how he doesn't sleep around and it's his first time with a man. That's right, Mr. Spy, Honey Trap is already having his first hiccup. It is then that Shi Hei Yian finds out how Ha Jun is, in fact, not gay, and that apparently most of the information about the target, if not all, that was provided to him is inaccurate. A typical day of Park Ha Jun, where he gave a lecture to his students, went by at the end of it. He went to the faculty room and looked at his phone where Kong Shi Hei Yian's was saved and proceeded to send him a text. Meanwhile, Shi Hei Yian sits by the fountain in a typical park somewhere and peacefully drinks his milk tea. He notices a tough-looking man approaching his direction, making him alert. And then suddenly, a blonde, short-haired individual bumps into the man. A short-haired individual then apologizes to the man, who anxiously tries his best to let the foreigner know there's no harm done. Shi Hei Yian then notices the man take out a handkerchief and slowly pick up a toy car on the ground with it. Suddenly, a young girl approaches the man, calling him daddy. The man then affectionately reprimands the kid not to play with her toy car and make it dirty carelessly. A typical example of the do not judge the book by its cover trope. Anyways, turns out Shi Higion is actually waiting for the blonde foreigner he calls Shadow, an A-rank agent and member of their intelligence team. After greeting Shi Higion cordially, Shadow tells him they should move to another location before they start briefing. Shi Higion had no problems with that although he also has a condition of awarding Shadow of his reward for being the cause of Shi Hei Yian's mishaps in his operations so far. Before Shadow could tell what was happening, Shi Hei Yian had already pushed him to the fountain. Not long after, the two moved to another, more secluded location. After Shi Hei Yian tells him what happened so far, Shadow asks if Ha Jun really is not gay or if he's lying because he hasn't come out yet. Shi Hei Yian insists that it's the former, after all, what had happened to them is in a situation where Ha Jun would willingly lie about it. Shadow finds this turn of events weird since, according to their source, the young professor is really gay. And we wonder who that source could be. That issue aside, Shadows tells Shi Hei Yia how his team is still investigating the guys who made such a stir in the bar previously. Since their identity still needs confirmation, Shi Hei Yian will be updated later. For now, the surveillance team is just keeping an eye on Ha Jun's home, where nothing worth mentioning happened. Are you telling me these international spies didn't even realize the miracle that Ha Jun and Shi Hei Yian almost did that night? Well, apparently, they didn't since, if they did, 
This blonde spy would probably make a fuss instead of just handing Shi Hei Yi on the details of his new undercover identity to be able to observe Ha Jun at Wing University, where he works. The documents were supposed to be given to Shi Hei Yi on after he contacted the target. Shi Hei Yi on already did, but the incompetent intelligence team doesn't know. Moving on. Shadow reminds Shi Hei Yian to take note of any major happenings and to make his periodic reports diligently as he watches Ha Jun closely since it's looking like things will get more complicated. Shi Hei Yian seconds that idea as he reads a text message from Ha Jun himself, asking if he can call Shi Hei Yian. Back to the faculty room. Ha Jun's phone vibrates. Shi Hei Yian calls him instead and asks him why he wants to call. Ha Jun explains that he wants to confirm their meeting for the next day. At first, Shi Hei Yian had no idea what Ha Jun is talking about. That is until he remembers the happenings that particular morning at Ha Jun's house. That morning, Ha Jun had made Shi Hei Yian the usual breakfast that he makes for himself. Shi Hei Yian complimented the food, and since it was so well made, his conscience pricked him for receiving Ha Jun. More so since Ha Jun looked like he really believed his lies. Then again, Young Professor still couldn't help but have his reservations since he really can't imagine himself sleeping with a man. Although it's more of a problem from his side and not because he doesn't believe Shi Hei Yian's story. I guess alcohol can't always be the culprit. Moving on. Despite his doubts, Ha Jun is still determined to take responsibility for his actions and tells Shi Hei Yian that they should start dating for now. Shi Hei Yian is obviously sus, but this target of his is equally as suspicious. I mean, it's called a one-night stand for a reason. Shi Hei Yian and Ha Jun were watching a movie in the movie theater, and as if to mock our star spy agent, the story seems to be about a spy whose identity got found out by her target, with whom she had developed romantic feelings. Let's be honest, it's a premonition of what's about to happen to him. Heh. Yeah. Anyway, it's safe to say the movie is making him cringe and regret the fact that he booked the tickets just because it's popular. Even Ha Ju notices how Shi Hei Yian seemed to be so invested in it. After the movie ended and they were on their way out, Ha Jun asks Shi Hei Yian if he didn't like the film seeing as that's what his expression says. Dude, like, isn't it on Spy 101 to always hide your real emotions? As they're trying to probe Shi Hei Yian something, Ha Jun once again tells him he's free to stop dating Ha Jun if he's forced into it. Shi Hei Yian, of course, is just being forced. Then again, it's not like he just cut his ties with Ha Jun. After all, Ending their relationship would mean immediate failure of his assignment. And so, once again, acting like the very capable spy that he is, Shi Hei Yian blurts out how he likes dating Ha Jun and ultimately calls everyone's attention towards him. I'm no spy, but I can at least act more discreetly than this one. Having caught himself for his clumsiness and covering his embarrassment, he then drags Ha Jun somewhere he claims to be fun. Eventually, the two of them ended up in the arcade. Since it was Shi Hei Yian who had dragged him there, Ha Jun assumed that he liked arcade games, so when Shi Hei Yian absent-mindedly commented that it was his first time, it was understandable that Ha Jun would give him a suspicious look. Panicked, Shi Hei Yian tries to cover for his clumsiness again and instead turns the table to Ha Jun himself. Unfortunately, in contrast to how he looks, Ha Jun is, in fact, quite good with arcade games. He explains how he went to arcades with his friend, who liked these places when he was still an undergraduate. And as if to prove it, Ha Jun easily shoots a ball to the hoop. Looking around, Ha Jun notices a two-player shooting game and asks Shi Hei Yian if he wants to play a co-op game with him. Not long after it was game over for Ha Jun, he sighed and blamed the fact that it's been a while since he played this game, and that's why he's become bad at it. When he turns to Shi Hei Yian's side, he's taken aback at how Shi Hei Yian easily shoots at the targets and even makes a perfect score. After finishing the game, Shi Hei Yian absent-mindedly comments on how a toy gun is difficult to handle, spoken like the real weapons expert that he is. Anyways, it isn't just Ha Jun who is surprised at Shi Hei Yian's achievement, but everyone around them as well. The clumsy spy once again panics for saying things that could raise suspicion in himself. It's a good thing Ha Jun didn't really notice. In fact, the young professor only assumes that Shi Hei Yian's expertise is because he had a lot of shooting practice at the mandatory military service most Korean men go through. Ha Jun then notices a piece of popcorn inside Shi Hei Yian's shirt and tries to help him remove it. But it seems there wasn't just one, and as he tries to take it out, the piece appears to have rolled further in. As such, he asks Shi Hei Yian to go elsewhere since they're currently in public and getting curious looks. Inside the men's bathroom, 
Ha Jun continues to look for the popcorn to the point that he's getting too close to Shi Hei Yi on him for comfort. Suddenly, Ha Jun says that being in such proximity to Shi Hei Yi on made him remember something from that night. Anxious that he might remember something he shouldn't, Shi Hei Yi on once again kisses Ha Jun on the lips to try and make him forget whatever it is. But apparently, there was no need for Shi Hei Yi on to be anxious since the thing that Ha Jun remembers is him being such a bad kisser. Ha Jun tells Shi Hei Yi on how, that night, he had thought that Shi Hei Yi on was no good at kissing. Even so, he himself initiated kissing Shi Hei Yi on, not to mention started being more intimate as well. Suddenly, they heard footsteps. Without warning, Ha Jun pulls Shi Hei Yi on into one of the stalls, after which, he starts touching Shi Hei Yi on. First, Ha Jun's hand moves inside Shi Hei Yi on's shirt and squeezes his nip knob. Shi Hei Yian starts panicking again, but he worries that Ha Jun's actions might turn him on this time. When Ha Jun turns his attention to his peach, the blushing Shi Hei Yian exclaims how they shouldn't do it there. But then innocent Ha Jun only says that he had already taken it out. Well, it seems like all this time, Ha Jun is really just looking for the popcorn piece. Um, yes. Of course, that is the case. Anyways, now that the popcorn is found, Ha Jun tells the very embarrassed Shi Hei Yian that they should now leave and even goes ahead himself. After leaving the stall, Ha Jun sees a man who is just about to enter his stall. But Ha Jun stops the older man and even tells him how he just broke the one inside the said stall, so the man should use another one. The man is confused at Ha Jun's outburst, but that isn't the case for Shi Hei Yian. If he broke it, shouldn't he help fix it? Heh. <laughs> Later on, the two of them are walking on the sidewalk with Shi Hei Yian walking closely behind Ha Jun, the young professor turns to look at Shi Hei Yian, informing him that he had reserved dinner at an Italian restaurant. Since the restaurant is near Ha Jun asks if he doesn't mind just walking to it. On their way to the restaurant, Shi Hei Yian notices a couple who seems to be on a date. Shi Hei Yian is thinking about the situation he is in now, about his relationship, and how things are progressing between him and Ha Jun. He wonders what Ha Jun is really up to. But he goes with the flow since, for some reason, Shi Hei Yian can't tell what he's really thinking. Suddenly, Ha Jun starts talking about deceiving someone of how it's really possible for someone to bait their own selves just so they can deceive another person. Since he's guilty as charged, Shi Hei Yian once again panics only to calm himself down after Ha Jun tells him that he's talking about the movie they watched earlier. Seriously, man. At this point, even James Bond would rather deny being a spy himself instead of being lumped together with you. Anyways, now that he knows Ha Jun isn't talking about him, Shi Hei Yian gives his honest take on it. Talking based on his personal experience, Shi Hei Yian explains that baiting oneself, like the case in the movie, is possible since it isn't really such a big deal. After all, it's not like they're in a life or death situation. Unlike his experience, in the movie, the spy was deceiving her target with lies and excuses. Anyways, Shi Hei Yian realizes that he's giving TMI again and tries to cover his blabber mouth by making excuses. But it's not like Ha Jun's mind, and he becomes suspicious. In fact, Ha Jun is even pleased that now Shi Hei Yian is finally walking beside him, to the point that the young professor smiles. And so, once again, Shi Hei Yian wonders what really goes on inside Ha Jun's head. Later that evening, Ha Jun drops Shi Hei Yian in his neighborhood. He wanted to drop Shi Hei Yian right in front of his house, but he declined since the alley is too narrow for Ha Jun's car. Before saying their final goodbyes for the night, Ha Jun asks Shi Hei Yian if he has any plans for the weekend. And then if he does, he should let Ha Jun know. Oh, a second date, right off the bat. Yes, the day went really well. Shi Hei Yian couldn't respond and just wonders if he is Ha Jun's ideal type after all. Well, we wouldn't be doing this recap if you were not. Anyways, while on his way to his place, Shi Hei Yian noticed a couple of people panicking. So even talked about calling the emergency hotline 101. Not long after, he sees for himself what all the fuss is about. Meanwhile, Ha Jun's phone turned off, indicating that Shi Hei Yian is calling him. At first, Ha Jun wonders why Shi Hei Yian would call him so soon and asks if it's because he got home safely. But the thing is, he couldn't. Shi Hei Yian explains that although it may sound unbelievable, right in front of him is his blown up house. Somewhere not far from where Shi Hei Yian's place used to be, Ha Jun and Shi Hei Yian were on a bench. 
Shi He Yian has a blanket draped over him as Ha Jun asks him if he has other places to stay, which he doesn't. The good thing is no one got hurt in the incident. However, this also means that Shi He Yian has no choice but to stay in a motel for a while. Honestly, if I didn't know any better, I'd say all of this is done to get these two together. Or did I? Heh. Anyways, Ha Jun once again surprises Shi He Yian by suggesting that he should stay at his house for now. Since he has a spare room, they'd be way better than staying in a motel. In fact, Shi He Yian can stay as long as he wants until he finds his new place. Although it's just a thought and Shi He Yian can decline if he wants. Instead of outright accepting, like any spy would give the same situation, Shi He Yian went on a rant about how Ha Jun is being too careless, inviting just anyone to his house. After all, what if those people are suspicious and dangerous? Ha Jun might get hurt or something. Shi He Yian, however, caught himself shortly and tried to cover his clumsiness again using his SS rank agent acting. I swear, if this guy is SS rank, that I should be at least SSS rank. Anyways, Shi He Yian tries to convince Ha Jun that he isn't really someone suspicious and even offers him his ID card and a credit card. Although he soon after tries to take it back since he actually needs those. But once again, Ha Jun doesn't really look like he's suspecting Shi He Yian. In fact, Ha Jun even thanks him for worrying about his well-being like that. And so, with all that settled, Ha Jun stands up and asks Shi He Yian for any other things they should carry. Although, unfortunately, Shi He Yian really only has the bag be brought at their date earlier. At least the IDs and phone are safe. Shortly after, they are headed to Ha Jun's place now. On the way, Shi He Yian couldn't help but get anxious about the fact that he's going to be living with someone else for the first time, especially since it's not going to be just for one night. Then again, he slaps himself for having such unnecessary thoughts when all he should be thinking about is finishing his mission as soon as possible so he can return. It's funny how he becomes suspicious when he's not trying to, and he doesn't when he does. Moving on, once they arrived at his place, Ha Jun brought Shi He Yian to the spare room he mentioned. He explains that since it had always been empty, it's a bit messy. Although from what I can tell, it's way better than the room I spend most of my time at. As Ha Jun left Shi He Yian to unpack, he looked around the room. Then again, it isn't the first time he did since he already went through it the first time he was in the house. Anyways, now that he's inside, he should take it slow to investigate and look for the documents. For now, he should worry about taking a shower. Heading for the bathroom, Shi He Yian tries to call Ha Jun and ask if it's alright to use it. When he didn't get any reply, Shi He Yian wonders if he already turned in for the night and just went to the bathroom. Once inside, Shi He Yian remembers that he hadn't looked around in the bathroom the other day since people don't usually hide documents in there anyway. Then again, there's no harm in checking it out. And, of course, going through someone's laundry basket to look for documents is a no-brainer move for an SS rank spy. But then, Shi He Yian heard the door to the bathroom turn, which he should have locked in the first place. Anyways, within a split second, Shi He Yian managed to put back the laundry he was rummaging over and grabs the shower head to use on the intruder. As he did, clumsy star spy agent Shi He Yian loses his balance due to the water on the floor and crashes down. Ha Jun tries to save him from falling, only to find themselves on the floor in the end. Ha Jun then apologizes to Shi He Yian for surprising him since he didn't realize he was inside. Anyways, Ha Jun isn't the only one drenched right now. In fact, Shi He Yian is as well, which makes his nip knops visible under his thin jacket. They're in such an awkward position, which makes our little spy wonder why Ha Jun isn't moving away. Instead, Ha Jun moves away from Shi He Yian's wet hair and says how he really couldn't believe that he had slept with a man like Shi He Yian. After all, Kang Shi He Yian isn't his type at all. Well, ouch. Then again, our types change. So, Shi He Yian replies that what happened to them probably happened because Ha Jun is drunk, which made him lose his senses. Ha Jun entertains the thought, although Shi He Yian does not expect what happens next. Lightly touching Shi He Yian's lip, Ha Jun claims that he'll also claim to be drunk at the moment since he wants to kiss him. See, types change. Sometimes, in even less than a minute. Shi He Yian did not resist as Ha Jun moves to kiss him. In fact, Shi He Yian even closes his eyes as the two of them started kissing. Right then and there, on the bathroom floor, at the same time, the two of them are drenched. There's just one thing that's going on inside Shi He Yian's head. 
Ha Jun is a good kisser. Therefore, it's not his fault that he gets turned on with just a kiss. When Ha Jun figures this out, he then tells Shi Hei Yeon that they should continue it somewhere else. Ha Jun brought Shi Hei Yeon to the bedroom. As Ha Jun tries to continue making out, Shi Hei Yeon tries to resist by saying that at this rate, the bed will get wet. But once again, Ha Jun doesn't seem to mind such trivial things and starts feeling Shi Hei Yeon. Ha Ju notices how Shi Hei Yeon is so sensitive like it's his first time, and yet he wonders why he's not at all resisting. Of course, Shi Hei Yeon can't resist since he can't afford to make Ha Jun be suspicious of him. And as he always does, whenever he feels like Ha Jun is doubting him, he kisses him. And I guess that was enough for Ha Jun. Soon after, Shi Hei Yeon is exposed, and Ha Jun started servicing him without a warning. The surprised Shi Hei Yeon who also obviously felt good, asks if Ha Jun isn't really gay since he's such a natural in this kind of stuff. This time, it's Ha Jun who's being suspicious and giving such cryptic responses. Anyways, Ha Jun moves lower and starts messing with Shi Hei Yeon's buns this time, and without reserve at that. Makes us wonder if Shadow really deserved to be pushed into the fountain. Moving on, Ha Jun pushes his fingers, earning him a kick. Our scene then apologizes for hurting him, after all, this would be his first time holding a man with a clear mind, so he doesn't really know if he's doing it right. Well, it's Shi Hei Yeon's first time as well, although it's not like he can say that. When Ha Jun asks him if they should stop, Shi Hei Yeon shakes his head no. And so, Ha Jun continues the preparation with Shi Hei Yeon ringing in pain as he tries his best to hold out. Once Ha Jun deems it already loose enough for him, he takes out his piston and drives it inside Shi Hei Yeon. Obviously, it's very uncomfortable and painful for Shi Hei Yeon. Although it couldn't be denied that he's also feeling good to the point that he couldn't think straight anymore. Later that night, Ha Jun covers the sleeping Shi Hei Yeon with a blanket before heading to the veranda to smoke. He's deep in thought, trying to convince himself that what happened earlier is simply something driven by impulse and nothing else. Shi Hei Yeon woke up to the morning sunlight. He's alone in the bed and couldn't move properly due to unspeakable pain in his back. After checking himself for anything amiss, the thought that occupies his head is the fact that he just slept with his target, not to mention, it's also his first time sleeping with a man. Moreover, if an agent like himself is already in that condition, how much pain would normal people feel? Anyways, when he finally remembers what he does for a living, he reaches for his GPS tracker watch to spy on where Ha Jun is and sees that he's already inside the university building where he's supposed to be. He then reflects on the fact that he didn't even notice someone beside him had already got up and left while he just slept soundly. Forget about being an SS rank agent. He's a failure, even for regular agents. Clap, clap, for figuring that out. Congrats. Moving on. Suddenly, Shi Hei Yeon notices the smartphone provided by Vulture ringing. He slips on the blanket as he tries to reach for it. Still, he manages to answer it as he should. Although since when did a keypad phone become a smartphone? I have no idea. Let's assume the phone contains special features for it to be called smart. That aside, the caller turns out to be Shadow, who called to report the explosion at Shi Hei Yeon's place the previous night. Turns out, the building's pipes are leaking gas. So when one of the tenants left their heater on, an explosion occurred. There were no other traces of sabotage either, so it's the only plausible explanation. Then again, the place had always been used as Vulture's hideout and therefore, had always undergone annual maintenance. This year was no different. That's why it's really suspicious that it'll suddenly have facility aging. In Shadow's opinion, either it really is an accident or some expert individual had a hand in it. Either way, Shadow promises to dig deeper and let Shi Hei Yeon know if there are any updates. And then Shadow starts talking about the new residence for Shi Hei Yeon, although the latter tells him that it's not necessary for now, and that he'll tell Shadow about it in person. Before they ended the call, Shadow reminded Shi Hei Yeon that his new identity's first day at work is today because of this and that. Shi Hei Yeon is just about to look at the files Shadow had handed to him last time. So he really had no idea about his new disguise yet. At this point, I'm going to stop criticizing his credibility as a spy, not to mention an SS rank spy, since it's pretty much given how capable he really is. Probably. Anyways, Shi Hei Yeon is thinking that usually, in this case, the new identity is often a part-time lecturer or a new university student. At least, that's what Shi Hei Yeon is hoping for. However, it seems like it's none of the above. Later that day, Shi Hei Yeon found himself sweeping the floor as a janitor. 
He curses at the shadow and the director for giving him such a laborious cover. Despite how furious he may be, however, he's no match for the tigress that is the manager and his superior. As Shi Hei Yian goes up a floor, another staff asks the manager if it's alright sending him to the fourth floor when Shi Hei Yian had just joined them today. The manager explains that he's the one who volunteered, so there isn't anything they can do other than wait to see just how long he'll last. Shi Hei Yian, of course, volunteered to have better access to Ha Jun's research office. However, he would much prefer if they don't bump into each other and make things complicated. Anyway, for now, he just had to do his temporary job. Not long after, Shi Hei Yian finally managed to sparkly clean everything within a 100 meter radius. Feeling so proud of himself and as well as relieved that now he can finally report to the tigress. If only he could do such a perfect job while doing his real job, then it really would have been perfect. Anyways, a student from a floor above suddenly lost her footing and is just about to fall down the stairs. She, Hei Yian, notices and is quick to catch not only the student's book and bag but the student herself as well. He would have done it perfectly as well if it weren't for Ha Jun suddenly appearing in Shi Hei Yian's line of sight. As soon as their eyes meet, Shi Hei Yian accidentally, or not, lost his balance. This causes him and the student he just saved to crash on the floor. Although the crash causes an uproar among the people in the area, the student still landed safely on top of Shi Hei Yian. The panicking student immediately asks Shi Hei Yian if he's okay. And although he claims to be fine, it seems that he sprained his hand. Despite the discomfort, he still handed the student's stuff to her with a smile on his face and tries to brush the accident as a joke. The student blushes at Shi Hei Yian's concern. Shortly after, other students gather around Shi Hei Yian. They complimented his reflexes and asked a bunch of questions about his identity. Although it seems like not all of the students hold the same admiration as most. Anyways, the students aren't the only ones who are curious about Shi Hei Yian. Ha Jun made his way towards the gathered group and asks Shi Hei Yian if he's okay. Shi Hei Yian awkwardly greets him, disappointed that he failed to hide his presence from Ha Jun. Without saying much, Ha Jun notices something amiss. He then tells the student who failed to go to the infirmary as she may have incurred some injury. Ha Jun then asks Shi Hei Yian to talk with him if he has time. Not long after, Shi Hei Yian found himself in the faculty's research office. Although it wasn't part of the plan, the unexpected development is welcomed. Since now, Shi Hei Yian didn't have to be sneaky to get himself familiarized with the office structure. Spy stuff aside, Ha Jun walks towards Shi Hei Yian with the first aid kit in hand. He reaches out for Shi Hei Yian's left hand, letting him know that he noticed how it was sprained. Shi Hei Yian compliments Ha Jun's keenness in his head. He didn't deny or make a fuss about it and just let the young professor treat his sprain. Ha Jun then tells Shi Hei Yian that he should get it checked in the hospital and that he'll talk to the tigress himself for him. But Shi Hei Yian brushes it off, claiming that this stuff often happens to him. After all, as a spy, albeit clumsy, meant that his hand would have been broken and put back together several times already. Seeing as Shi Hei Yian would be stubborn about it, Ha Jun lets the matter go, and instead asks Shi Hei Yian why he didn't tell him he's working in their building. Shi Hei Yian explains that he was just assigned recently and didn't know that Ha Jun is working there as well. When Shi Hei Yian tries to address Ha Jun formally, Ha Jun tells him that he should call him by his name. After all, Shi Hei Yian isn't one of his students. They had an awkward staring match as Ha Jun remembers the incident earlier. He's certain that when the two of them made eye contact, Shi Hei Yian suddenly stumbled, which caused the fall, although it could all be a coincidence, too. Ha Jun has been staring at Shi Hei Yian intensely, and it's making Shi Hei Yian uncomfortable. Ha Jun breaks the silence himself by asking Shi Hei Yian if he's okay. Thinking that Ha Jun is talking about his hand, Shi Hei Yian is just about to assure him again. Ha Jun, however, isn't talking about the injured hand, but is actually talking about Shi Hei Yian's bun buns. The young professor admits that he wasn't able to control himself last night. He had to prepare for his morning class, so he wasn't able to wait for Shi Hei Yian to wake up, which he feels bad about. Although he did clean inside Shi Hei Yian while he was sleeping, he might still have stomach ache because of it. Ha Jun says that he knows he should have used rubber, but the thought hadn't crossed his mind then. Plus, it seems like he had been too rough last night because he noticed how swollen Shi Hei Yian was when he cleaned earlier. Before Ha Jun could say any more awkward things, at least for Shi Hei Yian, the blushing newbie janitor covers Ha Jun's mouth. He exclaims that down there is okay. 
Instead of pushing away Shi He Yan's hand, Ha Jun wordlessly kisses his palm and then teases it. Ha Jun tells him that Shi He Yan is more sensitive than he looks, since every time he presses or touches something, Shi He Yan reacts right away. It's the first time that Shi He Yan's been touched at all. That's why Shi He Yan going to a gay bar and looking for a guy to have some fun is really hard to believe. Shi He Yan tries to turn the table, although this time Ha Jun is being smart and is using Shi He Yan's distracting maneuver against him. Shortly after Ha Jun kisses him, Shi He Yan pushes his face away as realization finally dawning on him. Ha Jun then tells him that he has to prepare for his next lecture. So Shi He Yan should get going too. Although Shi He Yan easily agrees, he remembers everything that had happened last night. Ha Jun claims that it was his first time with a man and yet he didn't hesitate as he did all those things to Shi He Yan. He even went down his black hole, for effing's sake, not to mention the perfect cleaning in the morning. And so, for the first time since being in contact with Ha Jun, Shi He Yan couldn't help but suspect that Ha Jun has been lying to him all this time, and his spy self didn't even notice. It's been a couple of days since the incident at the stairs with the student. Shi He Yan continues to do his job at the university, although to his dismay, no significant development ever happened between them, neither is the location of the blueprints. Today, Shi He Yan is tasked to clean the research facility where Ha Jun works. He notices the family photo on his desk and tries to ask about Ha Jun's father, but Ha Jun reacted coldly and didn't even say anything about it. Ha Jun then tells him that he'll be late going home later tonight, so Shi He Yan should go to bed himself, and that going forward, he'll be the one cleaning the office. So, there's no need for Shi He Yan to do so. And just like that, another day of no significant progress went by. Later that day, Shi He Yan is dutifully sweeping the hallway when two men walk by. They were talking about a young Kali who is allegedly inflexible and whatnot. It's like some boomers criticizing the Gen Zs about their privileges. That's cool and all since we're entitled to our own opinion. What's not cool, however, is passing by a janitor doing his job, being aware of the trash bin right behind him, and still randomly throwing a cup right in front of him. An empty cup is one thing, but a cup that isn't. That is exactly what this entitled Baldi did, who had the audacity to compare himself to our seam. And when Shi He Yan involuntarily reacted to what the Baldi did, instead of an apology, Shi He Yan just received a condescending glare. Shi He Yan just acted the bigger man and didn't make more fuss. Ha, if I were him, I'd have thrown the cup to the Baldi's face. As Shi He Yan continues to do his job throughout the day, he reflects on how good manners and education don't always go hand in hand. In fact, those who claim to have brains are often the ones who don't have manners. It's something he witnessed not just once or twice. Still, it doesn't mean that it doesn't upset him anymore. And it seems like that attitude isn't exclusive to the professors either. Shi He Yan is in the student lounge, cleaning after the trash of students who don't know what trash bins look like. A couple of students who have obvious malicious intentions observe Shi He Yan for a while before calling him over to clean a spot he missed. Innocent little Shi He Yan went unsuspectingly, only for a cola to be poured directly on his hands and make more mess. The effing effer smugly mocks Shi He Yan and calls him out for the stunt he pulled previously when he saved his student on his first day. Shi He Yan was shocked not because he got scared of being bullied like that, but because, in his eyes, the F-tard looked pitiful. I mean, if some university student brainiac suddenly loses his manners and starts acting immaturely, something's bound to be wrong with him, right? But, of course, our Shi He Yan isn't someone to be messed with. Shi He Yan stood up and threw the dirty cloth he was using for cleaning, right on the F-tard's face. He. This stunt, of course, surprised everyone in the room. And since that wasn't enough, Pissed off, Shi He Yan even went and ranted about how students like them should study if they're at school. The F Tard, who looks like he's related to Kerchak, is just about to punch Shi He Yan, not knowing that Shi He Yan is all up for it. After all, his stress has been piling up, so having an excuse to beat up someone is very much welcomed. As long as he doesn't kill the kid, he should be fine. But before any action could occur, someone suddenly exclaims for them to stop. A blonde four eyes came running in their direction to intervene. His presence alone made the students leave things as they were and walk away. Mr. Four Eyes then turns to ask Shi He Yan if he's okay. He explains that even though those three are known for their bad personalities, they don't really have the courage to go against professors. Anyways, even without him introducing himself, 
Shi He Yeon already knows Four Eyes' identity. After all, he was in the file that was given to him. His name is Yeon Yoon Jae. Although he looks clumsy and weak, he's also a professor at the university. And, after being offered to go to him if Shi He Yeon needs help, is a good guy in Shi He Yeon's books. Suddenly, Shi He Yeon's keypad smartphone receives a message. Shadow texted him to do something at 10 tonight, which, by the looks of it, is something that Shi He Yeon had been anticipating. Later in the evening, Shi He Yeon returns to the now empty research facility office. It seems like Shadow had a hand in hacking the security system of the school so Shi He Yeon could copy some files on Ha Jun's computer, as well as plan a tracking program meant for future use. Shi He Yeon happens to glance at the photo that is on Ha Jun's desk of his family. He notices that the frame has another picture behind the one in front and took it out. It was a picture of what looks like an annoyed kid, Ha Jun, and another kid who was crying while holding Ha Jun's hand. It's already evening, and it's about time everyone goes home. Some students bid farewell to Professor Four Eyes as he waited for someone. Not long after, Ha Jun arrives and apologizes for being late. Meanwhile, in a fast food chain called Mama Touch, Shadow and Shi He Yeon were having their periodic meetup. Shadow compliments Shi He Yeon for being able to live with their target, and, as expected, he teases Shi He Yeon for becoming closer to Ha Jun. So, like Gim Mi said previously, that the intelligence team is monitoring Ha Jun's house. How do you not know about this new living arrangement? Anyways, Shi He Yeon explains that it's not like he's getting anywhere, even when they're living together. After all, Ha Jun's been going home late these days, so the two of them haven't been talking. Speaking of Ha Jun, Shadow asks if Shi He Yeon didn't find anything on Ha Jun's research office computer. Shi He Yeon explains that although there were a lot of files, they were all research materials. There aren't even ones that are encrypted or suspicious. Since the blueprints are not in his house or in the office, then it could be that Ha Jun hadn't received it yet. For now, the only thing they can do is for Shi He Yeon to get closer to Ha Jun and continue to observe his surroundings. Plus, the photo that Shi He Yeon saw of Ha Jun from when he's still young is bothering him. Anyways, as far as Shadow is concerned, they should be getting closer to their goal since Shi He Yeon is already living with Ha Jun. Shi He Yeon denies it, explaining that their current relationship is more platonic and physical. Clumsy spy agent Cherry strikes again as he absent-mindedly admits that they did it. Equally clumsy and incompetent intelligence team member Shadow forgot all intentions of being inconspicuous as he tried to confirm what he had just heard from Shi He Yeon. Meanwhile, in some fancy restaurant overlooking the sparkling city night, Professor Four Eyes and Ha Jun are having dinner. Yoon Jae is saying how he would have been fine if they just had soju instead of going to such an expensive restaurant, which Ha Jun hadn't brought Shi He Yeon yet to, by the way. Anyways, Ha Jun says not to mind it since it's the first time they're having a meal together ever since Yoon Jae returned from the UK. They're simply catching up like good old friends, and I can't help but get anxious if this four eyes will get in the way of our couple somewhere along the way. Moving on, Yoon Jae tells Ha Jun that he had heard about how he refused to get engaged. Ha Jun then asks him if he has talked to his mother. Yoon Jae didn't deny it, although their meeting wasn't on purpose. He explains to Ha Jun that his mother is simply worried about him. Even when she complains that her son is letting go of such a good lady, it's only because he's not looking for a lady. This is a BL manhwa. After all, Yoon Jae tries to pry for the reason for the breakup, to which Ha Jun explains that it was simply because they were not compatible. After all, his mother was the only one ecstatic about the relationship. And it's not that his mother is really worried about him. She's just trying to look for something to fill the emptiness caused by his father. Although, if you ask me, Taking your fiancé to a gay bar to break up is just too much. And then Yoon Jae asks Ha Jun if he's okay. After all, Ha Jun used to act like this before. This is bottling up things inside him when things don't go his way. He totally acts normal on the outside, so people don't notice, but it doesn't mean that nothing's wrong. Thinking back to the relationship he currently has with Shi Hye Yeon, Ha Jun realizes that Yoon Jae is right, and perhaps it's because of that that he's acting so unlike himself when he's with Shi Hye Yeon. Then again, it's not like he dislikes it. Going back to Mama Touch, Shi He Yeon and Shadow are now sitting at one table while they are talking about Shi He Yeon and Ha Jun's bedroom business. Surprisingly, they did just like how normal friends would when confiding to each other, and not like how spy agents are supposed to. Shadow is confident that since Ha Jun and Shi He Yeon have already done it to the end, then their mission is as good as done. But Shi He Yeon thinks otherwise. After all, 
Even though they did it, it's not like the two of them are getting any closer. Shi Heian can't even figure out what Ha Jun is thinking, more so if he likes Shi Heian or not. Shadow then points out that since the deed was done, then at least Ha Jun's bun crusher likes Shi Heian bun buns. Shadow then starts giving more useful points to Shi Heian. Although Ha Jun's preferences are still questionable, it's still a fact that he frequents gay bars. And for Ha Jun to claim that it's his first time sleeping with a man is willing to take responsibility, then it could only mean one thing. Cutting short such an interesting conversation, we are returning to where Ha Jun and Yoon Jae are. The two were on their way back from dinner when Yoon Jae suddenly tells Ha Jun that he can rely on him anytime if he feels that things are getting difficult. Even though he might not be able to do much to help solve his problems, he can at least give him his presence. Mr. Four Eyes then walks ahead, saying how, as they get older, going for round two of drinking is becoming tedious already. Ha Jun thinks over what Yoon Jae just said and has half the mind actually to share his issues with his friend. At the end of it, though, he still didn't. After all, it seems that Yoon Jae himself is part of the issues since, as far as Ha Jun is concerned, it's only with Yoon Jae that he will never share them. Ha, huh, I don't know why, but four eyes feels a bit sus. Or maybe it's just because I'm a bit biased. Very late that evening. Shi Hei Yeon was waiting for Ha Jun by the front door when the university professor got back. Remembering the conversation that he had with Shadow earlier, Shi Hei Yeon makes his way towards Ha Jun. Shadow explained to him that if Shi Hei Yeon really is Ha Jun's first man, then that means that Ha Jun really likes Shi Hei Yeon, his body, at the least. And since Honey Trap's real meaning is capturing both the body and feelings of the target, Shi Hei Yeon only needs to capture Ha Jun's heart now. Shi Hei Yeon's welcome to Ha Jun is typical of some jealous wifey when the hubby gets home late. Not that I would know any better. Ha Jun was cool and perfect in responding to Shi Hei Yeon. He didn't even lie or made excuses, being totally honest by saying that he already told Shi Hei Yeon he'd be late going home. And that, he met up with a friend and had a drink. Shi Hei Yeon then comments on how he can smell the alcohol in his hair and clothes. Although according to Ha Jun, he only had one glass. That aside, Ha Jun asks him why he's outside even though the night is chilly. Even Shi Hei Yeon's cheeks have turned cold. Seizing the moment, Shi Hei Yeon confesses that he's been waiting for Ha Jun to get home. He explains that today is the start of the weekend. And didn't Ha Jun already tell him to let him know if there's something Shi Hei Yeon wants to do over the weekend? And just like that, Shi Hei Yeon's flirting gets through Ha Jun, sealed by a meaty kiss. Not long after, the two back inside the house, and once again, Ha Jun pushes Shi Hei Yeon against the wall. It's being so forceful that Shi Hei Yeon couldn't help but wonder why Ha Jun is so intense when it comes to doing the waka waka. It could be that Ha Jun had always been like that, or he's like that because his partner is Shi Hei Yeon. I very much prefer the latter, of course. Without warning, Ha Jun pushes Shi Hei Yeon to the couch and opens his shirt so he can attack his nip nops and neck. It's becoming too much even for Shi Hei Yeon that he had no choice but to push Ha Jun away for a bit. Shi Hei Yeon then asks him if something had happened to him during the day. In return, Ha Jun asks him whether it really matters if something did happen. Well, of course there isn't. After all, if it did turn out bad and ruin the mood between them, then it's not good for Shi Hei Yeon either. Anyways, Shi Hei Yeon answers no, although he still wants them to take it slow. After all, it's not like he's going anywhere that they have to be in such a hurry. Shi Hei Yeon promises to be with him, to which Ha Jun responds that he won't even let him escape either way. But see, it seems like Ha Jun isn't in the mood to be doing it on the couch. Ha Jun had Shi Hei Yeon lean against the wall and then slowly exposes him. Shi Hei Yeon complains that the position is uncomfortable for him, but Ha Jun just promises not to drop him and still does as he pleases. Ha Jun then says how even though Shi Hei Yeon flirted with him earlier full of confidence, now that they're actually doing it, Shi Hei Yeon keeps on breaking away from him whenever he touches him. Shi Hei Yeon's push and pull attitude is making Ha Jun confused as to whether Shi Hei Yeon has a sensitive body or is just lying and acting. Either way, Shi Hei Yeon is doing a very bad job at it. Let's add being a spy agent to that, too. Speaking of lying and acting, Shi Hei Yeon returns the accusations to Ha Jun. After all, Ha Jun claims that Shi Hei Yeon was his first, even though the way he handles their bedroom exercise so far is that of someone who had been around. Still, 
Ha Jun insists that he was. And just like that, they started the rodeo, and intensely at that, too. She, He Yeon, tries to have him slow down. But instead of stopping or slowing down, Ha Jun just insincerely apologizes for forgetting the rubber once again. Despite everything, Shi He Yeon sticks to the plan and continues to do his best to capture Ha Jun's heart. Once the both of them get off, Shi He Yeon kisses Ha Jun himself and tells him not to run away from him. After all, the weekend had just begun. With the moon high above the sky, Ha Jun and Shi He Yeon are now both lying on the bed. They were exhausted from their earlier activities. Although Shi He Yeon is once again dead to the world, Ha Jun is still awake. He's just silently observing Shi He Yeon's sleeping form as he remembers the conversation he had with Yu Jae earlier, as well as when Shi He Yeon seems to know that something had upset him during the day, not to mention that Shi He Yeon promised to be there with him. Silently, Ha Jun pulls Shi He Yeon's sleeping form closer to him. Flirting 101 is a success, and Operation Honey Trap is progressing positively. The next day, Ha Jun wakes up alone in the bed. He tries to look for Shi He Yi on all over the house, but to no avail. That was when he dressed himself up and took his car keys, probably to look for Shi He Yi on outside. Before he could leave the house, however, the front door opened. In comes Shi He Yi on with a grocery bag in hand. Shi He Yi on greets him cheerily, although the greeting was responded with an inquiry of where he had gone. Shi He Yi on explains that when he checked the fridge, he noticed they were out of milk and eggs. So he went to get some not to mention some fresh air, and of course doing his morning inspection around the house. Although technically, that's the intelligence team's job. Anyways, Shi He Yeon tells him that they can split the expenses for the food, as well as the other things they've bought, not to mention the utility fees. I wish I had someone to split my utility fees, too. Also, Shi He Yeon adds that if Ha Jun really doesn't want him to pay rent, then he won't give any. That aside, Shi He Yeon asks Ha Jun why he's still there. To which Ha Jun responds that he's just thinking, even though he does it intensely every time they do it, Shi He Yeon still has no problems walking around afterward, so maybe he should try and put more effort next time. It seems like Ha Jun is getting back for the flirting he received last night, and is doing the same thing with Shi He Yeon now. Well, Shi He Yeon figured it out and accuses Ha Jun of having ulterior motives. Anyway, even though it's obvious, it's not like Ha Jun will admit to it and instead blames Shi He Yeon in return for being green-minded. Although, it doesn't mean that Shi He Yeon will just let Ha Jun criticize him without a fight. Shi He Yeon tells Ha Jun how he doesn't even have basic manners in the bedroom. After all, every time he would have Shi He Yeon totally exposed, not to mention always forgets the rubber. All the while, Ha Jun opens his fly and doesn't even take off his clothes while they do it. Ha Jun laughs at Shi He Yeon's simple mindedness and tells him that Shi He Yeon should have just told him in the first place. Although, in Shi He Yeon's defense, it's not like he even had the chance to do so. They're always in a rush and are intense every time, after all. Feeling daring, Ha Jun tells Shi He Yeon that they should do now what he wants to do. To have Ha Jun's clothes off him, after all, they're both fully dressed now. Sitting on the kitchen island, Shi He Yeon slowly works on Ha Jun's polo. As he did, he asks Ha Jun if he works out regularly. After all, even though Ha Jun's work forces him to sit at a desk all the time, his body is still well built. Ha Jun explains that he regularly does various workouts three times a week, like swimming and tennis, since he needs stamina so he can focus on his research. However, what Shi He Yeon hears is just the young professor bragging about his well built body. Suddenly, Shi He Yeon stops whatever it is he's doing. He realizes that with how things progressed, the two of them will end up doing it again, which Shi He Yeon is reluctant to do at the moment. After all, he hadn't recovered yet. And so, Shi He Yeon faces Ha Jun to tell him that they should stop for now. But then, Ha Jun suddenly kisses Shi He Yeon. The surprise and blushing Shi He Yeon exclaims at the sudden and unexpected attack. But Ha Jun claims that since Shi He Yeon suddenly stopped, he thought that he's expecting a kiss from Ha Jun. Anyways, that aside, Ha Jun demands for Shi He Yeon to come clean about sleeping with a man before Ha Jun. Shi He Yeon denies the accusation strongly. He claims that he has as much experience as Ha Jun in these kinds of things. Ha Jun then points out that he's sure himself that it's his first time. Anyways, if Shi 
He Yeon insists that he really had experience before. The Ha Jun would like to see how good she He Yeon really is. Pivert. Sorry, I just had to say it. She He Yeon is sprawled against the kitchen island. His bun buns are dripping wet, indicating that he didn't even clean it when he left for the grocery store. But of course, if anyone is to be blamed, it would be Ha Jun who keeps on not using the rubber whenever. Anyways, Ha Jun keeps on hitting Shi Hei Yeon's black hole. All Shi Hei Yeon could think about is how he wish everything ends quickly, since he isn't really feeling good. But then, accidentally or not, Ha Jun found Shi Hei Yeon's sweet spot. As Ha Jun pressed on it, Shi Hei Yeon's sword turns alert. And since it really was Shi Hei Yeon's first time, he didn't know that men also had their own sweet spots. Shi Hei Yeon didn't understand what was happening to him. Why his body was shaking, and his personal sword is standing on his own. Without another word, Ha Jun turns Shi He Yeon on the kitchen counter, so he's now lying on his back. Even Ha Jun himself is surprised at the condition of Shi He Yeon's sword. Already knowing what Ha Jun is probably thinking, Shi He Yeon tells him beforehand that he can't put it in since the stuff from last night is still inside him. Ha Jun says that he won't do it, but since Shi He Yeon is already in the mood, then the two of them might as well do it together. And so, Ha Jun took out his own sword and slid it together with Shi Hei Yeon's. Anyways, since it was only Shi Hei Yeon who was subjected to stimulation, he wonders when Ha Jun's sword started to stand alert. Giving in to Shi Hei Yeon's demands from earlier, Ha Jun takes off his shirt. And so, even though they're doing it outside, what they're doing right now is no different from still actually doing it. Am I making sense? Anyways, as the two of them are about to finish, Shi He Yeon reaches for Ha Jun and kisses him. By the middle of the day, Shi He Yeon is on the veranda and recalls what happened in the morning. He's starting to question if he's still considered normal despite everything that they did first thing in the morning. Since Shi He Yeon himself feels ashamed of those things. Not to mention the fact that shortly after, they used the kitchen island when they had breakfast. Anyways, looking around the veranda. Shi Hei Yeon notices the used cigarettes in the ashtray and even recognizes what type of cigar it was. Although for some reason he had never seen Ha Jun smoke in front of him yet. Ha Jun arrives to join Shi Hei Yeon in the veranda and asks him if he's tired. Shi Hei Yeon answers that he's fine, although he's a bit sleepy. And then Ha Jun reminds Shi Hei Yeon that next time he should leave a note or message when he goes out. Ha Jun explains that he's worried Shi Hei Yeon might fall down if his legs give out while he's outside. Shi Hei Yeon interpreted Ha Jun's reminder as him bragging how great his technique is in the bedroom, to the point that he'll cause Shi Hei Yeon's legs to give out, although that wasn't really what Ha Jun meant. Shi Hei Yeon then suddenly went on a rant. He admits to Ha Jun that although he's got great stamina and a nice body, his techniques are nothing to brag about. After all, not everyone likes it done intensely. In fact, if it were him then he wouldn't do it like that. After hearing that, Ha Jun realized that Shi Hei Yeon is actually a top. Well, he is until he met you. He. Shi Hei Yeon tries to make an excuse and cover his clumsy mouth, which Ha Jun lets go anyway. Ha Jun admits that he's at fault since he always doesn't use rubber and sincerely apologizes. With that settled, Ha Jun once again asks Shi Hei Yeon if he's really fine since he wants to invite Shi Hei Yeon out. 